Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So in recent videos I've spoken a little bit about LexD storage pools and specifically the ZFS storage pool and how it's so much more efficient than using a um, say a files based storage pool. But this particular point in time I want to delve into a problem that I ran into recently and a solution. So the default storage pool in LexD, if you do a LexD init and you follow the defaults, is normally the ZFS file system. And storage pools can be also formatted as Ceph, BTRFS, and LVM. But there's also a storage pool type called DIR, which is short for directory, and all it really means is you're not really formatting a virtual disk or a partition, but you're just storing your files for LexD in a file structure that exists on the disk. Uh, for example, um, an EXT4 file system. So the directory driver in LexD is much slower than all other drivers because it has to unpack images and do instant copies of instances, snapshots, and images. So we're going to learn an application for a directory storage pool in this tutorial. So here we are at the command prompt for one of my other LexD hosts, and I recently imported a container which was a copy of my discourse forum that I have at https colon slash slash discussion.scottabyte.com where I put all of the show notes and it also host questions and answers about the content of the tutorials. So I had decided to move this off of my QNAP NAS. And unfortunately, the QNAP NAS, as I discovered, uses the directory type storage pool and it's never caused me a problem before and it didn't cause me a problem now. However, this particular system, which I call VMS Mist, is actually a system that is a straight up Ubuntu system, and it is running the uh, LexD knitted with the ZFS storage pool. So here I have imported a copy of the discourse forum called Discourse Test, and presently right now this is stopped. And we've imported it from the other environment, and so we shouldn't have any problem uh, actually being able to run the container itself. So in order to move the container from the other system, I did a Lexi export on that container. And then over in this system, I did the Lexi import. So at this point, let's go ahead and try to start that container with a Lexi start discourse dash test dash test here if we can get this right so it starts the container and we should be able to do alexi exec discourse dash test and enter the boss shell so now we're connected into that system and this system is running the discourse server. The discourse server uses a Docker container as a part of the application. So if we do a Docker PS, you'll see that it cannot connect to the Docker daemon. And I went around and around to try to figure out why this was the case. And basically, I ended up discovering that you could not run an overlay Docker container inside of a ZFS storage pool. And so what I was going to do is create a new storage pool in order to host this and move the container over there. And we're going to do that right now. So since this didn't get anywhere, we're going to exit out of that and we're going to go ahead and do a Lexc stop discourse dash test. And now that the container is stopped, 
we're going to list out the existing storage pools on this particular LexD host with the LexD storage list. And you can see that there is one storage pool and it's default and it uses the ZFS driver, which is the default that you get when you run LexD init. And it's also kind of the preferred way to run containers inside of a ZFS storage pool, as I'd mentioned in previous videos. So let's create a new storage pool with the command lexc storage create, and we'll call this thing dirpool, and it's going to be type directory. And if we now do a lexc storage list, you can see that I have both the default pool and the dir pool. And to move our container to the new storage pool, we're going to do a lexi move discourse dash test over to discourse dash temp. And then the storage pool is going to be dir pool that we just created. And notice that we have to change the name in order to move it, but we'll take care of that here in a minute. So now that the app has been moved to the new storage pool, we can go ahead and rename the container with the Lexi move discourse dash temp. And we'll call it discourse dash test. Now that that's completed, we'll do a Lexi start discourse dash temp whoops dash test rather and now we can do alexi exec discourse dash test in the boss shell goes ahead and executes and now we can do a docker ps and you can see that the discourse app is actually running because it is inside the new directory storage pool we moved it over to, and we can actually do a Docker info. And if you look here, you'll see that the reason it wouldn't run inside of the ZFS storage pool is this particular application required the overlay to storage driver, and the overlay to storage driver is not compatible inside of the ZFS file system. Now, if we exit out of the discourse container with an exit command, we can do a Lexi storage list. And you can see that we have 15 containers using the ZFS file system. And we have 10 or actually one here using the dir pool, which is the directory file system that we just created. So to drill down a little bit further in this, I can do a Lexi storage show dir pool. And you can see here that it's currently being used by one container, which is the discourse test container that we've just worked with. Now we could also do a Lexi storage show default for the default pool. And the default pool will list all of the containers that the default pool is currently using. If we wanted to delete a storage pool, we would have to make sure that no containers were using that storage pool. So I'm going to do a Lexi stop discourse dash test, which was really only a temporary container for testing in this particular tutorial. Once the container stops, I'm going to do a Lexi delete discourse dash test and once the container deletes we can go back and look at the storage pool listing if we go back and do a lexi storage list you can see that dir pool now is being used by zero containers and because it's used by zero containers we can now do a Lexi storage delete 
dir pool. And it says that the dir pool storage pool has been deleted. If we go back and do Alexi storage list, you can see that I only have the default storage pool, the ZFS pool that we started with. So in summary, LexD supports multiple storage pools. ZFS storage pools are highly efficient and they protect your data because of the way they commit changes to the file and they actually prevent corruption to your containers in the event of a system crash. So nested Docker containers, which may require the Docker overlay file system, unfortunately are not supported inside of ZFS pools. So we saw how to move a LexD container with a nested Docker instance using overlay two to a directory storage pool. This allows more flexibility for the nested Docker applications. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.